Hey everyone, welcome to today's video. My name is Lucas, and today we're gonna to be talking about Creo AI. Now Creo AI is a vibe coding and AI agents based platform designed to make it easier for people, especially those non-technical people, non-technical programmers, build and deploy web applications through intelligent agents and collaborative workflows. And the thing that I'm most excited about when using Creo is the ability to bring in your you know, AI ecosystem that you build inside of Creo to other apps like Claude or like ChatGPT via an MCP service, an MCP solution. And what does that mean in very simple terms? Well, let's say that you build some type of project management app inside of Creo. You can basically go into your settings and get a line of code and bring it into, you know, uh, Claude or ChatGPT and basically chat with your app like that. And then you can eventually just add like your customer support app that you also build in Creo into something like Claude and all your MCPs, MCPs are in one place. And you can tell Claude to say like, you know, hey, here's my, here are my customer support tickets from last week. Please add them to my pro project management tool. So it's a very interesting way of bringing in your vibe coding tools and basically uniting them inside of an, of an LLM. And by the way, I'd love to invite you guys to my Discord community. We are a bunch of startup founders, designers, developers from all around the world. And we get together every single weekday at around 11 a.m. Eastern time to talk about different topics, tools, and challenges in our life. So if you guys are interested in joining that, link is down in the description below. So anyways, this is how the Creo website looks like. As you can see over here, you have this little text input and you also have over here a few projects that you can basically copy and remix. But let's go ahead and click on login to get started. And once we are inside of the app, we get this view, ask Creo to build an AI native app. So we have this text and we also have this explore section over here where we have all of these different types of apps that we can actually eventually remix and adjust to our own liking. So for example, if you have a startup and you need some type of product development and user feedback loop, you can go ahead and click on remix. And once you remix that, you can see that we have the preview up here. We have the dashboard over here. We have this specific workspace, which is basically like our project. And over here on the right side, we have the space where we can basically chat with the project and you know eventually implement any further changes. Now in the dashboard, we have the different files. We have the overview, which is basically like a build overview where you have the, the actual prompt, you have the summaries, we have the integrations, which I'm going to talk about shortly. We have the settings over here, which is basically, which I'm also going to do today. I'm going to show you how you can get this MCP and bring it into like something like Claude, for example, and talk to your app. And then obviously we have the databases over here, the data schema. You can see these are like all the different fields of the data that your app is collecting and you know, the code. And something that's native to all of these Creo projects is that you have this little chatbot over here, which is like this co-pilot. And basically what this does is that you can ask, it's like an AI assistant to your, to your project. So we can say like, how many feedback tickets do I have? And it basically goes through the specific data of your, of your app. And it says that it's, that, that it's empty, which it is empty. It doesn't, it doesn't look like it's empty here because this is like more of a facade, but in the actual database, if I were to publish this project, it is actually empty. Now, in terms of the integrations that you can actually integrate to your app, you have different categories. You have AI and search. So you have like perplexity or you have web search or open AI, for example, you have different collaboration tools like Gmail, Slack, for example. So, you know, if you get a specific ticket, like a feedback loop from someone that is using your app, that feedback can directly be integrated to your Slack channel. Same thing with Google calendar. Let's say you have like some type of premium support it can be connected to Google Calendar. So someone can someone can schedule like a meeting with you, for example. Now we can go ahead and add one of these, these integrations. So let's say, let's, let's um, add Google Meet integration to our app. So for example, on each feedback card, there's a Google Meet button where the user can click and schedule a meeting with their team. And as you can see, once the chat starts loading up, it says enable integrations, you can power up your app with external tools, just like we saw. And then it, autom it automatically selects the Google Meet integration, which is great. And it basically, you know, puts it here. All right, and now once this is done, you get this little notice over here, your project requires authentication. So let's go ahead and authenticate, right? We need to authenticate with our actual Google Meet profile so, th so that this actually works. 
So I'm going to open the URL and then you just want to like select everything and click on continue and the authentication is successful. We can close this up. Now, when you go down to the user feedback, you have all of these different cards and each one has like a schedule meet button. So if I were to click on this, you can basically like add a meet title about a specific topic, write the date, the time, the duration, and then create that meet and add to the calendar. And once I, you know, basically schedule that meet over here, you can see that it has the title name that I wrote that gibberish and the actual date that I wrote as well and the email that I invited. So basically you can see re re related feedback, the search function is too slow. It takes ages to find anything in our project database. Now, once we have that complete, I want to bring this user feedback project into Claude so I can go ahead and use that MCP connection and actually chat with my app. So inside of your project settings, so if you go to dashboard and settings, we have this MCP connection URL. I'm just going to copy this. Now inside of Claude, what you can do is you can go into your connectors and you can add a custom connector. So we can go over here and we can say this is our feedback app and we can paste in this MCP server URL. You want to confirm that you trust this connector. Yes, we do. So let's add this. And then when you configure it, you want to make sure that everything is like, you know, checked on. And so what we're going to do is we can go and open a new chat and then you can say something like, tell me about my feedback app. So let's go ahead and allow. And it tells me, all right, great. Your feedback app is a product development dashboard system designed to collect, manage and track user feedback through the implementation, blah, blah, blah. And again, it's very easy to get this information. Just go into your settings and literally just copy this URL and paste it into cloud settings. And I, you know, ask Cloud what type of entries can we add? So based on the schema, we can add feedback entries, we can add product requirements, feedback requirement links, users, user preferences, you know, maybe we can start with something simple like this dark light and dark mode. Or for example, you can bring in like different types of feedback or support tickets from elsewhere and import them into Claude and Claude will basically sync that directly into your project. And once it's done, basically we have this little dark light and dark mode switcher as well that we ask Claude to do, which is great. And again, we can continue adding different types of integrations. You know, like I said, we already integrated Google Meets, but we can integrate Slack as well to kind of push out these messages to Slack to a specific like feature request or meeting channel inside of Slack. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me in the comments below. And yeah, thank you so much for joining. Hope to see you next time. Goodbye.